Hello everyone, welcome to this video series on accounting for IGCSE. Today's video is on control accounts. In this video, we shall discuss in detail all the entries and adjustments in preparing a control account. And in the next video, an illustration will be seen to make our understanding better. In order to understand the meaning and function of control account, first let us understand what is meant by control. Controls are functions or processes that help to keep a check on errors or deviations from standards. In like manner, control accounts also helps to detect any errors committed in the double entry records. If you remember video number 10 of this video series which was on trial balance, a trial balance helps in detecting any errors in accounting records. However, there is a slight difference in the function performed by control accounts and trial balance. Businesses usually maintain their ledgers divided into these three categories as seen in an earlier video on ledgers. So there will be a sales ledger, a purchase ledger and a general or nominal ledger. Recalling again, all the debtors accounts are maintained in the sales ledger, all the creditors accounts are maintained in the purchase ledger and all other accounts would be found in the general or nominal ledger. So when a trial balance is prepared and if the two sides of the trial balance, the debit side and the credit side do not match, it is a clear indication of one or more errors in the ledgers. But it does not suggest which ledger or which section of the accounting records do we need to look for errors. So here is when control accounts are useful. Control accounts are of two types, the sales ledger control account and the purchase ledger control account. A sales ledger control account is prepared to determine if the sales ledger is free from errors or no. And in the same way purchase ledger control account will help to determine if the purchase ledger is free from errors or no. If it can be concluded using the control accounts that both sales ledger and purchase ledger are free from errors, but the trial balance prepared still indicates an error being present. We can conveniently limit our search for errors to only the general ledger. To sum it up, the main function of sales ledger control account and purchase ledger control account is to determine if the respective ledgers are recorded correctly. Let us consider a detailed example for sales ledger control account to explain how it will help in pointing out that the sales ledger is accurate or no. Sales ledger control account is nothing but a summarized total of all the transactions in the sales ledger. In other words, we shall add up all transactions in all the debtors accounts and summarize it to prepare a total debtors account. Consider this example of a business having just three debtors accounts A, B and C in the sales ledger. Transactions for each of these customers have been shown here. Let us try preparing a sales ledger control account by adding transactions in all the debtors accounts and summarizing it. There is a debit balance brought down in each of these customers. So let's add them all up and write the total in the sales ledger control account. So this gives us a total of $1,100. In the same way, goods sold on credit for all debtors shall be total and on the debit side we have sales $8,000. Let's do this quickly for all other transactions on the credit side as well, except for the closing balance carried down. Once all the transactions are recorded in the sales ledger control account, including the opening balance, the next step is to balance the control account and find out the closing balance. If we take the total on the debit side and then balance the account, we get a debit balance of $2,950 in the sales ledger control account. The last step is to compare the closing balance as per the sales ledger control account with the total of closing balances of all the debtors accounts. The total of closing balances in A, B and C account is $2,950 which matches with the debit balance of sales ledger control account. This is an indication that accounts in the sales ledger, in other words all the debtors accounts are free from errors. In order to see what exactly happens if an error is made, let us modify A's account by assuming that a casting error was committed and as a result the balance carry down was written as $700. Having done this, now if you compare the total of balances of sales ledger account, which is now $3150, will not match with the balance as per sales ledger control account. And hence one can go ahead and look for errors in the sales ledger by scrutinizing in detail. For our first step, we summed up all the transactions of all the sales ledger accounts to prepare the sales ledger control account. Doing this limits the use of the sales ledger control account as it does not help in determining if any error is committed in the daybooks or in posting transactions from daybooks to the ledger. For example, assume that sales to C as per the daybooks was originally $6,000 but posted incorrectly to C's account as $5,000. But control account proved to be inefficient in determining that any error was actually done in posting the sales. This was because 
sales ledger control account was prepared using transactions from ledger accounts only instead the control account should be prepared by extracting transactions directly from the source of transaction in other words directly from the books of prime entries taking information directly from the books of prime entries will have two advantages firstly all errors committed in the accounting records including the errors committed in the day books and in posting transactions to the ledger will be indicated by the control account secondly it is much easier to extract information from books of prime entries as in most cases totals of transactions for the period are already available as a part of the records so the entire process of preparing control accounts can be summed up using the following diagram transactions are first recorded in the books of prime entries then posted to ledger accounts and finally the accounts are balanced we then prepare a sales ledger control account which is nothing but a total debtors account by extracting information from these day books then find out the closing balance in the sales ledger control account if the balance as per sales ledger control account matches with the total of all the account balances in the sales ledger it can be concluded that the sales ledger is free from errors the same concepts can also be applied to the purchase ledger control account which is a total creditors account where transactions can be recorded by extracting information directly from the books of prime entries and then balancing the purchase ledger control account the closing balance in the purchase ledger control account is compared to the total of balances in all the creditors accounts in the purchase ledger if these two balances do not match then it can be concluded that one or more errors have been committed in the purchase ledger let us also consider some special transactions in preparing control accounts first credit balance in debtors accounts debtors normally have a debit balance at the start or end of the year however it is possible that there may be a credit balance in a debtor account possibly due to advance received from the debtor or overpayment etc the credit balances in debtors account if any should be mentioned separately in the sales ledger control account second debit balance in creditors account on similar lines a creditor account may show a debit balance at times due to any advance paid or overpayment etc the opening and closing debit balances in creditors account shall be mentioned separately in the purchase ledger control account the third special transaction is a contra entry or a set off entry it may be quite possible that a debtor of the business is also a creditor hence amount being receivable and payable at the same time thus the debit and credit balances shall be set off against each other for example x being a debtor receivable from x is dollars 200 and x is also a creditor hence payable to x is dollars 80 so a contra entry can be passed for dollars 80 and show the net amount receivable of 120 in the following way in our journal register the following entry shall be passed x account in the purchase ledger shall be debited by 80 and x account in the sales ledger shall be credited by 80 so in a sales ledger control account the contra entry is credited whereas in a purchase ledger control account the contra entry is debited having understood that control accounts are prepared using information taken from the books of prime entries let us see what is the exact source for each information for sales ledger control account the opening balance can be taken from the total of debtors balance at the end of the previous period the closing balance for the previous period will be the opening balance in this period credit sales can be taken from the total of sales journal for the period sales returns or return inwards will be taken from the total of sales returns journal cash or check received from customers will be taken from the cash book discount allowed will also be taken from the cash book if you remember there was a discount allowed column in the cash book check dishonored will again be available from the cash book refund to debtors will also be available from the cash book interest charged to debtors the interest entry is always done in the journal book hence it will be available from the journal contra or set off details will be available from the journal In the same way for purchase ledger control account opening balance can be taken from the total of creditors balance at the end of the previous period credit purchases for the period can be taken from the total of purchase journal purchase returns or return outwards can be taken from the total of purchase returns journal cash and check paid to creditors can be taken from the cash book discount received during the period can be taken from the total of discount received column of the cash book refunds received from the creditors can also be taken from the cash book interest charged by creditors can be taken from the journal book and set off or contra transactions can be taken from the journal book so this completes all our theoretical discussions for the control account please subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon and be notified when the next video will be uploaded wherein we shall see how to solve a control account question in exam